Okay, finally getting to take a look at the, uh, the Jinhao 9019. I've had uh, these pens in hand for a while, but I wanted to wait until I got the new color. So initially there were six. There was the black, the dark blue, you can sort of see a difference. If I hold them next to each other. The wine red, or what I refer to as a burgundy. Transparent green, although it looks more like a transparent blue to me, and translucent is what it really is. What they call the translucent red, or transparent red, but it's translucent. the <laughs> transparent white, okay, full demonstrator, and uh, drum roll please, the newest one, the lake blue, which is also a very nice color, kind of a, a teal color, and this is in contradistinction to the dark blue. So uh, I will take a closer look at these for you and for me and in writing and all that good stuff. Yes, I'm wearing my New York Giants sweatshirt. I will never give up hope. Sure, they're two and six, but there are a lot of games to play yet and they could very well end up in the Super Bowl. As observers. Anyway, see you momentarily. So before we discuss the Jinhao 9019 Dao, and I'll talk about that, that name a little bit later, I wanted to talk about Jinhao generally in the last couple of years. Um, I did a video earlier, which you can find uh, linked below and in my list, about is the Jinhao X159, of which this is a representative in many colors. Was this the fountain pen of 2022? Because it excited a lot of people and has some really unique features to it, even though it's clearly a, shall we say, an homage to the uh, Mont Blanc 149. Before I discuss this pen further, though, Jin Hao came out with a number of models in the last uh, year or two, which were part of my consideration of pen and of the year for 2022. Not just Jin Hao Pen of the Year, but Pen of the Year. Um, for example, the Jin Hao 80, which comes in a number of colors, but was another homage, shall we say, taking its design cues from the Lamy 2000. Uh, there are obvious differences. It's not a piston filler. Jin Hao really hasn't gotten into pistons. Uh, and the section is different. And the nib is different. But from the outside, even from the feel of the material that they used, uh, which simulates Macrolon, it's used with the, uh, the Lamy. Uh, this is a really terrific pen and very, very popular last year. So that was a, a definite contender. Next up, we had the 82. Now this one takes its design cues from the Sailor Pro Gear. And this comes in a humongous number of colors. I keep coming out with them and with 
mix and match caps and bodies and sparkles and all sorts of stuff. And again, cartridge converter, small number f five nib, but appropriate for the size of this pen. And uh, like one thing that Jin Hao uh, really started doing last year was adding these O-rings to their pens. I don't know why people didn't, very few companies did that before. Helps with the sealing and the cushioning and you don't over tighten the barrel. Terrific idea. So that was another contender for pen of the year in 2022. Then we had all the different versions of the uh, 100 Centennial. This being just one. And this uh, took its design cues from the Parker Duofold Centennial. First introduced, geez, in the 40s, I think, if I recall. And this is just uh, one of the many that I laid my hands on last year. So these were all very popular pen models and still are. And uh, this has a Chinhao converter, kind of the older style with the Chinhao emblem on it and a brass fitting back here. Hopefully you can see that without my adjusting the camera too much. Um, so mentioning that uh, converter, typical Jin Hao converter that we've known for decades really, or I have, is uh, very much similar to, to this one. And uh, Jin Hao did something a little bit different, starting with the 100 Centennial, or at least with the overlay versions. Um, this being an example of one of them. There are actually two overlays, gorgeous pens. But they brought out a new converter. Very attractive. Sorry about that. And uh, gold toned, more substantial, has a great feel when you turn the piston. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, Jin Hao is, has not gotten into piston models as of yet. I'm not sure that they will, but the cartridge converter approach to filling pens is certainly has a lot going for it. You have the, when you're at home or in office and have bottled ink, you have the piston experience using the converter. But when you're traveling, it's often much more convenient to carry a, a box or a, a couple of uh, ink cartridges. So you have that versatility. Uh, I like pistons myself. They're fun, but uh, if I'm traveling at all, I will definitely consider taking a pen or pens that are cartridge converters so I can carry some cartridge and cartridges with me. Here's the other uh, 100 overlay. I happen to have a cartridge in there at the moment. You can see the ink sloshing the round. A little bit that I have left because I've been using this pen quite a bit. So anyway, any of these models, and there are tons of variations of the 100 as well, uh, could certainly have been considered 
pen of the year for 2022. As with the 82, and there must be 50 variations of this pen now. And the 80, not quite as many colors, but I have five or six and really enjoy the simple design of this pen. Thank you, Lemmy 2000. And here we have uh, another example of the X159, which came out last year. And a number of reasons it was a it was a big hit besides the fact that it is uh, at least externally a very faithful representation of uh, Mont Blanc 149 is that Jin Hao introduced the number eight size nib, which took everybody by surprise and produced a lot of delight. Uh, after decades of all of us being used to a number six size nib, as the big boy, the number eight really uh, drew everyone's attention. And again, it's uh, Look at the Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc 149, which is considered an 8 or a 9, depending on whom you ask. Uh, you can see that it's really an appropriate size nib for a pen of this size. Now, I mentioned that Jin Hao doesn't do pistons, but Wing Sung does. And they came out with their own homage to the 149, which is even a further um, almost duplication of the Mont Blanc. This is a piston filler. Uh, I demonstrated, but I have ink in here. And they've even, they have one version which has a, a wraparound ink window, but here they've duplicated the, you can also get the version that I got, which is a, has the slotted ink window. Uh, easier to see on the, the Mont Blanc because the pen is not filled with ink. You can see it a little bit here, uh, perhaps. I guess it's too full to really see. So. Uh, and you can also, this is a uh, steel number eight nib, and I've very much enjoyed it. But you can also get a 14K uh, nib for about $100 more for the Wing Sung 630. And the German Dreadnought has an 18K nib. So just wanted to mention that before we got to the new next section and get a little further into the, uh, the 9019. So let me mention that I will provide a link below the video to all the pen models I've mentioned, uh, linking to various, as, as I don't stock and sell at the moment, any pens uh, other than what I had prior to moving to our smaller apartment. Um, I'll link to various Amazon sellers that I, that I find for various pen models. Um, so we're about to consider the possibility that the Jin Hao 9019 to Dow could be very well the 2023 pen of the year. Um, before I do that, I should just uh, 
mentioned something about the name word Dadao. Uh, it's very difficult to translate directly from Chinese to English uh, word for word, sometimes even concept for concept. And um, I married a Chinese woman 31 years ago to help me do that, and it still doesn't really work. But um, basically, Dadao means an impressive, uh, wide way, like a, uh, a wide boulevard or avenue. And it's considered to be an inspiring or good way or path. And although not stated explicitly, kind of what I, I picture uh, Jin Hao's choice of this word is a series of their warrior chariots proceeding abreast down a very, very wide boulevard in ancient China. Anyway, that's uh, I've seen so many different translations or interpretations of what the name means and that's kind of the, what I'm left with uh, a very broad almost royal boulevard to which one proceeds so again just to reiterate from the, the first scene we have the black and gold The dark blue, these all have gold trim actually. The wine red, which to me is what I would call a burgundy. Skip this bad boy. To the light blue, translucent pen. The translucent wine red. And what they call the translucent or transparent white. I think we'll just leave it as transparent in the demonstrator. Transparent white is another example of that kind of direct translation from the Chinese that doesn't quite work in English. And finally, the new Lake Placid, not, not Lake Placid, Lake Blue, which leaves me feeling quite placid. So, all right, let's call it the Lake Placid. Most Chinese retailers uh, call it the Lake Blue. And I haven't seen quite this color in a Jin Hao pen before. In fact, if we take a look at the, uh, the Wing Sung 630, that's almost the closest color comparison, but not exact, not the same. But kind of a, a deep turquoise or teal color in both cases. Anyway, very lovely appearance. And the pen comes in X fine, fine, and medium, nib sizes at this point. Um, so this is the the pen I've been using mostly. The uh, the all black, and this has the X fine nib. So let's take a. Look at that. And I'm not going to switch, uh, not going to switch camera, cameras at the moment for close up. We can do that a bit later. But this is the uh, 
checks fine. And you can get a very slight line variation by, uh, by applying some pressure, but not much. Whoops. Always hard to write with a camera or phone in front of one. Or even not in front of one, but in front of me. So that's very ugly, but also shows there's not much in the way of variation. Now let's see, this is a, I filled, this is a fine nib, and I filled this. First, I should say this is either Pelican turquoise or more likely Schaefer Scrip Peacock Blue. And I think it's the Schaefer Script. It's been several weeks since I filled it and so many pens, so many inks. It's a, a major first world problem. So this is the medium nib. And one can achieve a fair amount of line variation with this, but I use the word fair because it still is a stiff uh, Chinese nib. And I have Levenger Cocoa in that. Love these Levenger bottles. I guess they have the little ink reservoir insert inside so you Turn over the bottle to fill the reservoir, and I don't know if I can show this on camera, but that reservoir is right in the center there that you fill from. And it's plastic, you don't have to scrape the nib on your on glass, and so that's nice. And I thought for interest, we would fill the medium nib transparent white. <laughs> uh, as I describe more about the, the body of the pen. And I'm going to try that with this ink that I got from China. Can I read this from behind the camera? Probably not. You're going to have to read it on the video. Not a normal color that I would choose to get, but it has that cute little Haas bunny rabbit on the label, so that convinced me. I say try because I don't know yet if the section uh, and nib will fully fit into this bottle of ink. So we're going to try that first. If that's unsuccessful, then I have a mint, well, not mint, unused, because there's no mint in it, a uh, bottle of Omas, Return to the Motherland, red or orange. And I guess this must have come out in around 1997. I've ne never used it. Uh, but that's when Hong Kong was incorporated back into mainland China. Much to my wife's chagr chagrin, who is from Hong Kong. So when we take a look at this pen, whereas the other models we looked at certainly were homages and took their design cues directly from other models. This is a little more unique to Jin Hao. 
although the clip is very reminiscent of um, a couple of Namiki models. Everyone mentions the Emperor, but the, the Emperor is humongous in uh, relation to the size of this humongous pen. Uh, I mean, it's even, I don't have one in front of me or in my collection, but they are really uh, large pens. So I would say this is closer uh, to the Namiki Yukari Royale which is just slightly larger than this. Uh, that's a metal pen, but it has the same clip design, uh, which it shares with the Emperor. And the Yukari Royale has a metal band here, which the Emperor does not. So that is a better fit for me uh, as far as design cues. The Jinhao clip is much wider than the one on the uh, Yukari Royale. And uh, this, this has room to say Jinhao uh, 9019 Dadao or Dadao 9019. Again, I can't really read it from behind my camera, but hopefully it's showing up on the video. So, very hefty pen, uh, but because it's all acrylic, all plastic, light as well. So, slightly, almost identical in length to the X159, which might be a millimeter longer, but it's the girth of this pen that really sets it apart. Very wide section. This is a large and in charge, as I probably shouldn't have said because it's meaningless. This is a large uh, pen. I find it very comfortable but I haven't used it to write for hours. Perhaps my opinion would change um, after such an extended writing experience, which is rare these days to have. The X159 has a, I should show you the comparison, has a slightly narrower grip section and I have written with one of these uh, for hours and it's no problem uh, with fatigue because of the girth. So I wouldn't actually, ex at least for my hand, I wouldn't expect a problem with the 9019 Dadao. So, I think I only partially filled this one. But one more aside while I'm thinking about it. So we had the conventional converter that we've all been used to for forever. Um, and Jin House is no different, approximately 0.8 millimeters of ink in those. And in this one, this is the newer one that came in my Jinhao 100 Centennial and the one that's very nice improvement, the uh, gold trim, very, very nice feeling solid converter. But the real surprise in the 99 Dadao, which alone, because it's, it has the number eight size nib, the has the X159 nib. <clears throat> but what really breaks new ground is the size of the converter they have created. Humongous. And 
I didn't fill this all the way, as you can now see. Um, had I done so, this would have held 2.1 milliliters of ink. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to write that much <laughs> with one pen for a considerable amount of time. Um, because I'm, I have so many different pens inked. I just wanted to put enough ink in here to be able to write with uh, here for this video, but that's a humongous converter. And let me show you in the sans ink, because the other thing about it is unlike other Jinhao converters, this is also threaded for security. So <laughs> look at that bad boy. And this is in relationship to a conventional converter that we've all used for decades as far as uh, the amount of ink a converter will hold. So this is a real game changer and and a beautiful the converter can be said to be beautiful this one's beautiful in its own right uh, flawless to use very very smooth and then i really love all of the the gold accents so let me thread that back in here and turn down the piston and let's see if we can fill it with that first ink the bunny rabbit ink or the haas ink obviously they did they created the ink label in homage to my surname or not so let's see what we can do and it does not fit okay well i'm glad i had a secondary plan i'll have to hold off on this <laughs> color of ink for a bit longer and i hear my wife vacuuming in the back which you may as well so this is the Omas Return to the Motherland. And it's uh, it's not a straight red, it doesn't appear. It's more of a orangish red. In fact, that since this is unopened since 97, uh, I don't see any sediment collected, but let's... Uh, A little shaking regardless and hopefully that vacuuming won't distract too much from the filling of this pen so almost a complete fill from one go. Let's depress the plunger again. And give it another shot. Oh boy. Well, that worked very well. Just about 100%. And you can see uh, Hopefully, you can see the collection of ink in the clear feed section. And let me put this aside before a major accident occurs. Yeah, it's a good 90 or 95 percent filled. I could, uh, you know, gone for another plunge, and we would have filled 100%, I'm sure, but 
This will last me for the next six months, the size of this converter. And well, this is the medium nib. Nice color ink. Not something, again, I would normally choose. But it's, uh, it's not a bright red. It certainly has orange tones to it. So let's let's just do a a side by side comparison with no pressure on the nib. So this is the X fine. And uh, I would have chosen this ink, the Peacock Blue, for this pen, but obviously I'd already filled that black one with Peacock. In weeks past. So here we have the Levenger Cocoa. It's always a little difficult to tell, compare line widths when you have different inks and different color inks, but let me move the hand away. Oops, did that backwards. So that wasn't extremely helpful, but. There's not a huge line variation between the sizes, but applying some pressure, I do get some slight line variation uh, with this medium Jin Hao nib. It's pretty juicy. A lot of YouTube pen reviewers do this, I guess I should do it once, just so you, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Oh, I don't plan on never doing it again. <gasps> yeah, that. Which tells me nothing is <laughs> about a nib, or other than a, a very, uh, the specific nib you have in front of you. Every nib is individualistic, and every ink is uh, individualistic. So, doing this motion of, uh, okay, how, how wet is it really doesn't tell me anything about the pen model or the nib model. It just tells me about that individual pen. So, if you're wondering why in my reviews I never do that, now you know. So this is the incredible, gorgeous Jin Hao 9019 Dao, or as we now think of it, the impressive wide boulevard pen. And, uh, I'm now going to go watch my Giants lose to the Cowboys, no doubt. I started this video, um, it was not a, a one-day deal for various reasons, I had other things to do, got distracted. So when I began this video and said the Giants were two and six, well, after last week they... <laughs> <laughs> two and seven, and we lost our quarterback, Daniel Jones, for the year. I'm sure many of you watching this couldn't care less. But. And uh, so we play the Cowboys today, and I think we will probably be two and eight. And you can now cry and commiserate with me. 
Maybe I'll come back for one more scene to let you know how the game came out. If I'm still alive. All right, take care. So for those of you who are not football fans, I wanted to give you the, uh, the final result of, of today's game for the Giants. Um, being in the same division, we play the Cowboys twice a year, every year. And the first game that we played against them in this season, they beat us 40 to zero. Yes, that was uh, quite a game. But we didn't let them do that again because we got 17 points this game. Yes, we got 17. They got 49, but, but we got 17. So they have scored against us this year 89 points to 17 points. But this was our third string quarterback's first game starting in the NFL. He didn't do too bad. Um, defense played decently, and uh, there's nowhere to go but up. <laughs> so thanks for everybody's concern about the, uh, the G-men. We'll be back next year. We have so many more games to play, and we're two and eight. <clears throat> I mean, we're two and eight. We showed the Cowboys something this time. Okay, enjoy your fountain pens.